Let's have a sesh on lean production. So lean production is about reducing waste. And if you reduce waste, then you'll increase efficiency or potentially increase productivity. And this is great because it's going to lead to less costs or more revenue. Now let's think about waste, the types of waste that exist. Well, the first is that you've got too much stock, too much raw materials, too much components that are held, held in your factory, in your warehouse. And that's got a storage cost. So that cost itself for storing too many stock, too much in terms of raw materials or components, so storage cost, that's a waste. Also, if you hold too much, it might go out of date, it might become obsolete, it might have perished. And these are problems. And again, waste of cost, waste of money. The second type of waste is high defects. You're having lots and lots of defects on your production process. And that's gonna be a waste in terms of those raw materials that are spent, the components that have gone and maybe they can't be used again. High waste, costs. The next is high fluctuation. Maybe you've got an ever-changing production volume. Maybe it's a seasonal business. And there's a waste in the fact that you've got lots of full-time employees and they're not being utilized all the time or all year round or even in certain phases of the year. The fourth is you've got too large a factor and outlet. Maybe you've got a factory that's 500 square foot and you need one only that's 100 square foot. And that's a waste in terms of cost, in terms of rental costs, space. That's another waste. And the fifth is if you've got poor production, planning, or you don't have the latest technology. And that means that you're wasting time because you can't produce as quickly as possible. And time is money and that's a waste. Now let's think of the four main types of lean production, of which the first two are the most important. And that very one that's most important is just in time or gym. And that's about having the exact amount of raw materials, components, stock, and it arrives exactly when you need it and the exact amount. The evaluation, the important thing to think about here is do you have trust in your suppliers because you're so dependent on them always being there, maybe every day ordering the exact amount. So it's all about that trust in supplier when you're thinking about just in time. But why just in time would solve some of these situations is because look, this too much stock held and all these storage costs, well, if you're having deliveries coming in every single day, you don't need to worry so much about your storage or about it going out of date. So that's why just-in-time can help this type of waste. The next is Kaizen. Kaizen, Japanese word for change good, um, and it really just means continuous improvement, small incremental changes that add up over time. It's about improving bit by bit your production process. Examples could be if you've got high defects, well, you might come up every day with different ways to improve your process. Maybe you decide to move from a quality control system to more of a quality assurance system. And you find bits, you do quality circles, employees gather around each day and think, well, how can we make this process better? Maybe we did 50 today and we had two defects. How could we do 55 tomorrow and just have one defect? How can you do that? That's what quality circles are all about. Also, it could be that you've got um, this high fluctuation issue and you've got lots of employees that are often not fully utilised. So maybe you could change the structure of their employment contracts. Maybe you could move away from having all full-time workers to some part-time workers or zero-hour contract workers, but there's ethical issues there. The evaluation for Kaizen is it's about a bottom-up culture. So if the bottom-up culture isn't there, Kaizen won't work. You need your employees to be well up for it. The next is cell production. So that's about having teams of workers who complete whole tasks in close proximity to one another. Maybe you've got 10 units that need to complete a certain final product and you will really lump them closely together. And because you're lumping them closely together, the main thing that you're saving here is that that large factory that you had, well, you're reducing on your space, you're bringing all the processes very closely together. It's also suggested that doing this is highly motivating and additionally, again, of lumping everyone really closely together is that you might actually be able to solve these defect situations and you will have less defects as a result of that because you'll have someone overseeing the whole process that's making sure that the production process is as efficient as it can be. The evaluation for cell production is that the fact that often you need to have multi-skilled labour. If you've got 10 different stations, then it's quite common in cell production that the labour are able to work on different stations so they are multi-trained and that might be a problem to get them to that level of skill. The next type of lean production is lean design. Lean design is about fast product design. It's about 
coming up with an idea and designing it and putting it to market as quickly as possible. Sometimes it involves having simultaneous engineering. But within this fast product designs, the key to lean design is that if you're able to do it, you're gonna get first mover advantage. And if you get first mover advantage, you're first to the market and you'll be able to use one of those pricing strategies that is price skimming because you can be able to charge the highest price because you're the only person around supplying that product. Evaluation for lean design is the cost of the technology because often using lean design involves having top-notch technology. Maybe it's CAD processes, but in today's day and age, it could be any type of technology process. Hope that helps on lean production and I'll see you at the next video.